Welcome back, folks. You're listening to Starbase Summaries, our twice-weekly podcast where we talk about what's happening at Starbase. You don't have to see me. That's how it's a podcast, but you do get to see what is happening out there with the Starship program. Kicking it off with some parts being moved around the yard there. That was the static fire adapter we were looking at. And moving over to a ship QD plate, a quick disconnect flying around in Mega Bay 2. We're going to run up the road a little bit here to the Massey's test site right there by the moat. Body of water in front of us is affectionately called the moat that goes around st uh, around Massey's, not around Starbase, <laughs> around Massey's. Over at Massey's, there's that B18.1 test tank. Still a lot of cleanup work happening after the Ship 36 anomaly, observation, explosion, conflagration, deflagration, whichever, right? There's some cryo tanks over there as well. And delivery sign. Oh, we got a lot of shots of Massey's here. Seeing what's going on, I mean, a lot of the stuff at Massey's is, is not affected. It's just around that ship stand. But that's the nose cone jail. It's an old test structure. Here is a shot from up the road. This is right when you come out of the Mesquite around the corner approaching Starbase. And uh, got a little bit of scrubby scrub in the foreground there. But that's just that open area. If you've ever visited Starbase, you're, you're going through mesquite scrub trees on both sides of the road. You turn around a corner and you emerge from the trees, then all of a sudden you have the view of the Starbase in the distance, the two big buildings, the rocket garden, and the towers. It, it's almost like a Jurassic Park reveal. I think they need, like, two boosters on either side of the road with a sign across. So when you drive through, like, the timpanies start to hit. Dun, dun, dun. Anyways, um, <laughs> got a couple shots of various things on the approach to Starbase over here. Nice slow pan here. This is sort of the backside of the uh, Sanchez lot, the assembly area where they stage and assemble lots of stuff, like it says on the screen. There you go, the storage site. Well, the uh, companies putting their advertising on the side of their containers out there. Bold move, companies. <laughs> they do end up in the videos a lot. Just a lot of different stuff uh, being stored back here. That tarp, is that lime green tarp might be on the top of some BQD hardware. Is that a shipping container? Is that just the outer structure? Is it not finished? I like how it says scrapyard really big on the jersey barrier. Anybody else call those jersey barriers? I don't know if that's the right name for them, but uh, the concrete barrier. And this is the part of the video where somebody jumps into the comments and says, actually, it's only a jersey barrier if it originates from the sparkling region of Jersey. All right, check this out. <laughs> this is a whole thing. Uh, this massive tube structure, you see the top of it there. It's laying horizontally right now, but watch this. I actually did a little bit of verification on this. Look, okay, here, we're going to pan down the length of the thing. It's just sticking up above the fence there, but this is uh, the transfer tube. Transfer? Transfer tube? Transfer tube. Downcomer. You hear a lot of different names depending on who's labeling the diagram you're looking at. The important thing is that this is a massive structure that carries methane down from the methane tanks to the engines. And it has to flow a ridiculous amount of methane to feed all of those engines. There you can see the whole thing. Like for scale, see the little bobcats and the, the excavators and cranes and stuff in the foreground? Look how big that thing is. I can't accurately compare it to the size of a Falcon 9. Um, I don't think it's anywhere near the actual size of a Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is a little bit bigger than you than you thought, so not quite uh, to the level of, oh, it's moving. Putting a Falcon 9 inside of a booster. You'll get a real sense for scale on this thing whenever they start to lift it up. Clearly it won't fit into the Starship horizontally like that, or the sorry, the booster horizontally. Um... So, we're going to see this get, uh, I guess we don't see it get attached to cranes, but we are going to see it go vertical a little bit. How do I know? Did you watch the video before commenting? No, but I saw the thumbnail choices, and I was like, that is an interesting thing to talk about. Here you go. So, look how big this thing is. This transfer tube functioning as the main thoroughfare. It's like a high-volume liquid methane pipeline that goes from the methane tanks at the four, the, the top part of the booster. Ship has a little one, too. Uh, but from the methane tanks all the way down to the engines and the amount of methane you have to flow to keep 33 Raptors happy, 
That is a huge tube, folks. So it is going to end up inside. It's going to get stacked into the booster there. And uh, that was actually a really cool catch that they caught that out there. We had a couple of uh, photographers, videographers out getting some footage of that. So some work. This is looking into Mega Bay 1 and some work on the roof of the Star Factory. Everybody's strapped in and stuff like that. Here's some construction behind the Star Factory. What you see, the, the building in the background, the black building, that's the office building. Star Factory to your right there in that shot. Then we're going to run all the way down the road to the launch site with some gratuitous cloud time-lapse action here. Moving it, looks like, it looks like Jack and Dee were actually riding around together because I see the watermarks flip-flopping. It's like Jack Flyer. D wise, Jack Fire, D wise, Jack Fire. It's like moving up the road as if they're riding together here. It looks like two towers opposing chopsticks, blast shields, and then down on the, on the right hand side, those concrete bunkers. Hey, look at this! Oh, it's like a behind the scenes shot. Are we, are we going to cut to Jack's camera view, or do we just come from Jack's camera view? And then we went to the behind the scenes view. This, this is what happens. Like when you see all the shots, that's how we get a lot of the shots you see in these videos. So we're going to zoom in on the static fire adapter here. This was just to the right of uh, OLM-1 and to the left of those blast shields, those big concrete uh, berms that they had. Continue to work on the bracers and stuff like that. The bracers, braces. Now this is labeled Boca Chica Beach, but the water you're looking at there, that's actually the mouth of the Rio Grande. This is literally Boca Chica. This is the little mouth of the big river right here. On that side, those vehicles are in Mexico. That's the Faro Baghdad uh, Lighthouse, the little tower there. That is not a launch tower. And this side is the United States. So th 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 I think that's the first time that Boca Chica Actual appeared in a video. In any event, looks like we're tearing down a vaporizer all the way back over at Matthews. I wonder if you have Matthews? Massey's. I think I called it Matthews last time. I wonder if you have to yell timber before you knock down a vaporizer. Some cranes moving around. We continue to see these massive drilling rigs work on uh, the pilings for the Giga Bay. You don't just show up out there and put a massive structure direct on the shifting sands of Starbase. You need to drill down to bedrock or as close to bedrock as I guess you can get out there and put in those massive pilings. Now we're going to look back and do a quick pan. Tilt, actually down the ship that is back there in the Mega Bay 2. That, of course, is ship 38. We've seen it there getting worked on for quite some time. Tile patterns look like, like is it art? Is there a message in there? The party, have you, anybody tried to scan that with their phone? <laughs> See if it pops up a URL? That would actually be kind of cool. Huh. Anyways, this is from the uh, the south side of the road there, looking over towards Starbase. Some shots of Orbital Bad 2. Sometimes I see some comments like, oh, some of these shots are just the same. Why, why do you put in the same shots? A big thing of this is we use them for the Starbase updates, and we go back and we analyze. So when we do the full analysis, we say, oh, well, here in this shot, you can see this exactly, this exactly. We'll spend five minutes talking about a shot. And in these videos, we're sort of getting those shots out there for you quickly so you can start looking at them before we do the full analysis, which we do once a week. That's the whole point of our Starbase summaries here. Some scaffolding stairs there, folks going up and down, working at pad two. There is a part, just generically labeled part, being lowered into pad two. We've seen this. I mean, they're like feeding the pad. <laughs> it goes down into the maw of the pad over and over again, all sorts of different parts. Grab a little tagline. That looks like a little plate or brace of some sort. Figure that the crane can pick up more than that, but anyways. Some folks working up on Pad 2's shorty chopsticks. Got a little bit of a safety railing, scaffolding there. And a little bucket sort of thing hanging down on one side. Working on the cladding over at Pad 2 as well. The huge blast shields that they're installing on the shipward, the star shipward side of the pad there. You can see it in the background as well. So that those flames don't get all up in the main structure of the tower. Tower would probably be fine. Lines and hoses and electrical wiring and stuff like that you probably need to protect. We're going to run over to pad 1 again. The battle damaged Tatooine version of pad 1 here. 
it, of course, is getting a ton of work as well. In fact, here we saw them cut this back panel off. It looks like they actually welded uh, attach points to it so that they could attach to the crane and cut it off, clearly trying to access something on the backside of the Bush quick disconnect here. Not entirely sure. I, I haven't seen yet, at least in this video, I haven't seen them stuffing parts into there or anything. I guess I should say on Starbase Live. But are they going to put a little flappy flap there? A door that they need to access on a regular occasion? Does that have something to do with adapting the lines to a ship there? Are there going to be exits for hoses or something that go up to the ship when it's on the adapter? I guess we'll find out. Have a quick disconnect arm. Which tower is this? It's it's why whatever it's said in the it's said in the, it's said in the description so never mind scroll back if you want to know which tower this is I was gonna do another quiz <sighs> massive hydraulic pistons here you can see that swing that quick disconnect away out of harm's way as the rocket flames go by look at the size of that piston and the size of that guy I feel like you could fit that guy into the piston. D don't do that. NASA Space Flight not responsible for uh, people who dumb, do dumb stuff like that. Don't get inside of a hydraulic piston, seriously. Look at all the little lines. When we put on the cladding, that's what I'm talking about. You see all the lines, the cabling, the raceways. Now, a lot of that's going to be in conduit. It's not just like bare cable or whatever, right? But uh, protecting that from the intense heats, heats, heat of the launch is a thing. Here's some adapter parts. This is back over to the side where they're working on that adapter. Braces, components that are going to fit together. You can see a lot of welding happening there, grinding, getting things to line up the way they need to line up. But they have a little uh, a workstation that they've built around this thing. Oh, and that actually said the braces are installed on the top side of the stand. Here you go. I do read the labels on occasion. Got a lot of flack originally. It's like, don't, don't just read the labels. I can read the labels. Remember, you can always switch back to the Klingon commentary if you want to just listen to the sounds of birds chirping and wind blowing instead of me talking about what I think I see in the video. But this is going to be really interesting to see how this thing ends up on the top of the OLM as they work towards a plan to test those ships over at the launch mount. There's a dance floor moving around. All right. Well, we saw an SPMT, then we saw it come over. I have no... What is that? Oh, there's some birds and a little rusty metal bit. Huh. I, I almost want that to blow back up again so I can see what that is. But uh, in any event, folks, thanks for watching. Starbase Summary, talking about what we see out at Starbase. See you down in the comments, and we will catch you nerds later.